What's up guys? So this is it. It's finally happening. Finally gonna make this this necromancer guide. I know I've been saying that for the last two weeks and uh if you even like watch my my recent playthroughs, they've pretty much been all necromancer. I've been having a blast playing her and I'm really I'm really excited to finally make a guide and like talk about about what I learned from just exclusively playing her for like the past three weeks. And when talking about the Necromancer, it's always interesting because she's always she's always been in like a weird place when you're talking about like the best mages in the game. Because you always have the three that come up, which is the Elementalist, Keeper, and Arcane Warrior. A Necromancer was never really like in the same, never really considered in like the same tier as them. You would say like she was always like kind of good, but she had her weaknesses, so people were like, eh, she's she's alright. And honestly, yeah, she does have some drawbacks. However, she's also the mage with the most potential. She requires a lot of thinking and like, I wouldn't say like strategic planning. But she, I would definitely put her up there where you kind of have to be a little bit skilled and understand like, under, understand the game a little bit. You can't just play her and just randomly, you know, cast spells around. She doesn't have a lot of survivability. Uh, compared to other mages, because she doesn't have Guardian Spirit. But, uh, anyways. Alright, to start out, um, I'll go over, like, how to build her, uh, what you should put your points in. And for a while, people kind of played her the same way. Um, because I think, especially in the start of this game, uh, what was his name, like, like, Penguin fetish or something. <laughs> it is something. Uh, he came out with a guide um, that got really popular that um, basically said to take Blizzard and I think that got adapted into the community for a while. But what I've noticed just recently is people are kind of straying away from that build and realizing that it's probably not the best way to go anymore. But I'm starting to ramble, so before I make this like a 20 minute video, let's just get started with this guide. Uh, but yeah, to start out, uh, Necromancer, go to abilities. Okay, the first thing you want to do and work towards is Walking Bomb. So you want a beeline in the first skill tree, you want a beeline straight for Walking Bomb and get it upgraded. This is crucial. Because this is basically, not only is it one of the best spells in the game, easily, um, this is like your, your bread and butter spell that you're going to be using most of the time. And that's also why people don't like the Necromancer, is before you get Walking Bomb, you're going to feel like you can't do anything. And she is, she's really weak before you get this spell. Uh, but you're going to have to, yeah, she's one of those characters that just starts off weak and just keeps ramping up. So you're going to have to play, I think, two threatening games to get it. Or what I do is I usually I'm usually playing with friends, so I have like a, I have friends just boost me uh, in Perilous, uh, so I get level nine right off the bat. Or um, or just uh, you know guys I've been playing with a while and they they feel like boosting me. Either way, like you just have to make sure if you want to do that, like make sure your team is on board. After that, you want to go for Fade Cloak. And you do this because, like I mentioned earlier, um, one of the problems with the Necromancer is she's really late in hitting her power spike. She ramps up so much, and in in a lot of like traditional like old builds, going for Blizzard, I mean, you wouldn't get your you wouldn't start ramping up until like level like uh, 15 or 16. You'd finally have your core done. Uh, going Fade Cloak right after. By level 10, you'll have everything that you need. And the, one of the points of this build is to feel more powerful quicker. And that's what going Fade Cloak right after does. It'll give you... I mean, Walking Bomb is good by itself, but this gives you a lot more potential for damage output. Right after that, um, I mean, I hate to do this, I've tried other ways, but you want to get Death Siphon. And then go for uh, Fade Step Upgraded. And you don't go to Fade Step Upgraded first. Is I've tried that, and without Death Siphon, you feel... You can definitely tell a difference not getting health and mana back on kills. 
Um, I would even recommend, like, in some cases, if you don't get, like... If you can't, like, upgrade, um, Fade Cloak on your next playthrough, like, say you only get two skill points, I would even recommend getting Death Siphon and then, and then working towards Fade Cloak. That's how important it is. So, Death Siphon, upgraded Fade Step. Uh, after that, you wouldn't think you'd want to get this next, but getting Clean Burn, which every time you use a spell, you have reduced cooldown on, or not spells, abilities, I always say that. But yeah, every time you use an ability, you get a reduced cooldown every time you use another ability. And that's, you wouldn't think it's a lot, but let's say, for example, you cast Walking Bomb to start out, and then you Fade Cloak, and then you Fade Step, and then cast um, Winter's Grasp. That's three seconds, that's huge. And not only that, uh, let's say you use Fade Cloak, and then you use Frost Step, and then, not Frost Step, Fade Step, and then Winter's Grasp. Um, that means, you know, Fade Cloak is also getting reduced cooldown time, so it synergizes so well together and making it so you, yeah, you like, you don't get your, um, damage passives earlier, but you'll be able to cast more spells quicker, and that actually makes a huge difference. Alright, now it starts to get fun. So you can finally, after that's all done, uh, get Power of the Dead and un Unsullied Victim next. And this is going to give you a huge boost in, in damage. Uh, Power of the Dead, every time you an enemy dies, uh, it increases your spells for 10 seconds uh, by 20%. And since you'll mostly be killing stuff like all the time, <laughs> uh, this, this passive will mostly be active for most of the game. And an Unsullied Victim, 25% um, damage boost to enemies, uh, over 50%. So combine these two together, um, that synergizes so well with your other spells you're using, Walking Bomb, Fade Cloak, Fade Step. I mean, even Winter's Grasp, like a little bit, <clears throat> but you don't use that for, you know, primarily damage purposes. Um, yeah, damage passives, get Virulence right after that. And some people will say like, oh, you know, get this earlier, but I disagree. Um, I think the damage passives are, are too critical. To your um, getting them earlier, you'll feel a lot more powerful and they'll be more useful, opposed to just like passing off a status effect. After that, you want to get upgraded Winter's Grasp. And I actually, I used to not take this, um, but I tried it out one day and I never looked back. Like, it, <laughs> it's so good as like a, a good like finisher. And since it ha does AoE damage now, now that you upgrade it. Um, combine that with your damage passives, it does even more. Combine that with virulence, so if one of them dies while they're chilled, I mean, it spreads to everyone else. It just creates like a huge just ripple effect where it just sh shreds enemies. And uh, you'll get some nice shatter combo combos too. But to finish it off, there's two things you can do. If you are kind of surviving and not really dying much, you can get Overwhelming Force, which uh, is the build that I go for. Um, or you can get ice armor. Uh, like if you find yourself dying a lot, get ice armor. Um, since I'm pretty confident, I mean, I usually I usually can stay alive for the most part, <laughs> except when I screw up. But yeah, I get um, overwhelming force right after that. It doesn't give you a huge damage boost, but I feel like I don't really need the ice armor, so I I opt to get this instead. Alright, <laughs> that took a lot longer than I thought, but now that that's over, I'm going to finally go over how to use each skill and then kind of how to use them all together as, you know, as one. <laughs> and this is what it should look like at the end uh, once you get all your skills done. So you want upgraded Fade Cloak, upgraded Fade Step. Upgraded Winter's Grasp and upgraded Walking Bomb. And first, I want to start out talking about Walking Bomb because this is going to be the ability that you usually open up with most of the time. And the way this spell works, I mean, some of you probably already know it, but you basically you hit a target with Walking Bomb, and when you press the ability again, it um, detonates and spreads to nearby enemies, so they start taking damage over time. 
and then when they die they explode so what you want to do is like I said when you approach like a group of enemies open up with walking bomb first and most of the time you want to detonate it so it spreads to everyone else you don't want to wait to do it uh, you want to do it right away so when approaching a group you want to kind of aim for the center guy so when you detonate it it hits the most targets and this is what you're gonna mostly be doing in every scenario I mean keep in mind like for example say you say there's like one enemy left you don't want to detonate walking bomb right away you want to keep uh, keep that damage over time on him because if you if you detonate it early on a target um, it get, yes it spreads to other guys but it gets off, off the target you first hit so especially when there's like maybe one or two guys or you want to wait for more to get close to him like don't don't detonate it right away in some circumstances because you want that you want to keep uh, keep hitting that guy with uh, with the walking bomb damage so to kind of show this, uh, you'll see in this gameplay, um, I just killed that group. Going on to the next group, I try to target the center guy. I hit him with walking bomb. I activate it so it hits everyone else. And you'll notice that they all start blowing up. <laughs> uh, that was actually pretty sick. But yeah, that's, um, that's what you want to do in most circumstances. Also, something you want to keep in mind is... For example, there's always going to be times where, let's say there's two enemies, and then uh, right before you enter, like near another group, you're like fighting two enemies, and then a group after that hasn't been aggroed yet. Don't waste your walking bomb on like two guys if you're going to be using it like right after. So make sure when you use it, um, there's going to be enough time for it to get off cooldown. So when you approach the next group, uh, you'll have it up. Because your teammates, <laughs> I mean, you can always just, like say your teammates, oh, like wait for my walking bomb to be up, but uh, most of the time they're never going to do that. So to play on the safe side, you always want to keep that in mind when when using the spell. Like don't don't use it like right before a huge group is basically what I'm trying to say. But from watching these clips, you'll notice that I wasn't just using walking bomb. I was using fade cloak and fade step like in in conjunction with that. And the next spell, next ability, <laughs> I want to talk about is going to be Fade Cloak, because that's the second um, ability you're going to be getting. And Fade Cloak is great, because not only does it uh, benefit a lot from your damage passes by giving you a huge damage boost, like like I hit like 3,000 with it when I'm, uh, when I'm up there, um, but it also uh, works really well with Walking Bomb. Because I said before, when you kill a guy with walking bomb on him, he blows up. So, the way Fade Cloak works is when you Fade Cloak a guy um, with walking bomb on him, he blows up sooner and it activates a kind of like a chain reaction. That's what you're going for. Yeah, and you'll see here, um, as I approach this group, I start with walking bomb. I, you see me detonate it there. I Fade Cloak the first guy to blow him up, and then right after that, it just... <laughs> You'll see, like, they all instantly just die. And that's what Fade Cloak is really great for. You kill them a lot faster, so they detonate a lot faster, and it just... It starts a chain reaction where they just all, all blow up. Like, I killed those guys in about three seconds. And Fade Cloak is also great for, um... For just dodging attacks and dodging damage. Because when you have it activated, you can't get hit by anything. So by using it skillfully, if that's even a word, <laughs> uh, by using it like that, um, you can kind of like play around with it. Like you just saw there, I ran through the brute and hit the, the dog. And it's really going to take a lot of practice to kind of like see how to use it in different, in different circumstances. And one, but once you get the hang of it and you can combine it with with walking bomb it's gonna give you so much versatility in what you can do you'll begin to love it but uh, part of the challenges of using fade step is going to be knowing when to use it defensively or when to use it offensively and this is gonna take a lot of practice knowing knowing what to do like here you see me 
use it offensively because um, I know I can survive so I I fade cloak the first guy and then fade step and then start a chain reaction like I showed before and that's gonna take a lot of practice to figure out like how to do it um, successfully and not die but um, this next clip I'm gonna show is going to be how to target the biggest threat with fade cloak and that's usually what you want to do most of the time so I open up with walking bomb and I notice an archer to the side, so that's the biggest threat. I fade cloak to him so I can take him out first. Because melee guys are not the biggest threat in this game. It's always going to be those range guys that can chunk your health. And that's kind of where fade step now comes into play. Because fade step, um, a lot of people will say like there's better spells to get on the necromancer than fade step. But I actually, I disagree for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first being is it synergizes so well with all the other other spells, especially with Fade Cloak. Like um, Fade Cloak, Fade Step combo um, does a lot of damage. Also, uh, Walking Bomb, Fade Step combo um, can help you finish off enemies, and that's what it's great for. It's like you Walking Bomb a whole group, and then you Fade Step all of them, and then. <laughs> They die even quicker, it starts, and that's what you're going for, you're going for that instant chain reaction. And you'll see here in this next clip, I, uh, I open up with Walking Bomb, like I said, I walk up and Fade Cloak one of them, and then right after, I Fade Step, and that's, that's what Fade Step is great for. Um, combined with Fade Cloak and Walking Bomb, you can, it makes you play a lot more aggressive, and it makes you take out groups of enemies a lot quicker. Combined with the fact that it doesn't cost mana to use and that's huge that's huge to have that available option like all the time like not have to worry about mana costs or anything also since it has a really short cooldown um, you can also spam it and that also synergizes well with clean burn like I said earlier so every time you use it that's one second off uh, all your other abilities and that's one of the reasons why this build is so great it offers you so much flexibility utility and short cooldowns but one of the biggest things is I kind of said it earlier like it makes you so you can play more aggressive and get away with it because especially when you're facing a lot of like melee guys you can use fade step to hit him and put yourself in a position of safety so when I try to use it or when when you try to use it you have to make sure to uh, the trick uh, well the trick about using it is you want to make sure you hit him with fade step, but you put yourself in a position of safety. Like you saw there, I uh, I fade stepped um, and hit him, and then I like used it to get back into safety, so he couldn't like retaliate and hit me. And that's what you're gonna have to do a lot of the time because you don't want to fade step into a group of enemies, and then that they just get up and like after you're done casting it, like they can just swing at you and take your health down. So you have to use it really really strategically and when it finishes you have to make sure you're in like a safe spot <laughs> I guess is how to sum it up also I forgot to mention this um, it also means like I said when you get your damage passives it also works really well with fade step because a lot of people will say like fade steps damage isn't that high um, that's actually not true when you get your damage passives on your necromancer like you see me like hitting over a thousand like obviously um, most of you probably won't hit that high because I have a lot of willpower but it's still you'll notice that it, it, it chunks him really well because with that 45% uh, extra damage it's a great finisher for just getting those walking bomb detonations uh, quicker and that kind of brings me to my last point about fade step is sometimes you're just gonna have to outright use it defensively so <laughs> you're gonna see here in this gameplay I was like I was gone for like the first minute and my team wiped. So now there's gonna be like, I don't know, like 10 guys chasing me. So I see them coming up here, I see all them. Now instead of playing aggressive, what I'm gonna do is I walking bomb, I fade cloak to dodge the arrows and then fade step away. And that's, there's gonna be some circumstances where you're gonna have to do that over, say, playing aggressive. And that's really, really where like, and that's a judgment call you learn from just, from just playing a lot of the Necromancer. And that brings us to the last ability, Winter's Grasp. And this is a weird one, because 
If I had to pick any of the abilities to kind of replace or I could get rid of, it would probably be Winter's Grasp. Because I've, I've tried out different things. I mean, I used to run like Mind Blast or uh, Ice Mine. Um, I tested those out for a while, but then I, I went back to Winter's Grasp because it actually has a lot of value. And when you're going for clear speed, it is a lot better than the other options for a couple reasons. And the first reason being is that you don't have to waste any extra points to get down to it. You get it right at level 1, and that's better than having to spend extra points like getting down to Ice Mine, for example. And even Mind Blast, because you don't get, you don't get it like right off the bat. You... You uh, you have it already at level one, and that's huge because you don't have to waste any points to uh, to get it in the future. So you can get things like your damage passes a lot earlier and finish your core a lot sooner. But of course, that's not the only reason. Um, the other big one is well, first I'll say like you know what the the problem is people have with it is you'll notice that Winter's Grass takes a lot of mana to use, so that's why people kind of shied away from it because they thought it wouldn't really synergize with Walking Bomb because you can't like cast Winter's Grasp and then cast Walking Bomb they both take too much mana so you, you would always have to like cast one then wait 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 and then cast the other and they're right but my other skills um, alleviate that problem my other abilities <laughs> Fade Cloak almost takes no mana you can Winter's Grasp and then Fade Cloak right after then obviously, like I said with um, with Fade Step, is that doesn't take any mana. So now it comes to how to use it and in what situations. Well, in most circumstances, you're gonna want to use it as like a finisher ability or when Walking Bomb isn't up. You never really want to open up with it in in most scenarios. So obviously, like I said, open up with Walking Bomb most of the time. Fade Cloak, Fade Step. Um, Winter's Grasp is going to be the thing after all those are done to give you another um, ability to dish out damage to give you more survivability and it works really well with uh, with virulence having it spread to other enemies and people could argue that ice mine is better but I disagree in that the game you kind of have to adapt to how the game is being played and there's always going to be parties where they just want to run through and Ice Mine is good for like really slow gameplays, like luring him to a spot and then ice mining him. You see, I don't like to play that way, and this build doesn't um, isn't set up like that. You want to be running around, you want to be casting spells, having fun. <laughs> no, that's not a good reason. But um, Winter's Grass is better in that it's good for any situations. And the reason why I said kind of like use it at the end is when you do your other like three three abilities most of the time by the time you're done with them you'll have uh, at least like killed some of the guys so you get mana back for that and that's why you can cast like winter's grasp usually right after your main combo but another great use for it is there's going to be some circumstances where you don't want to waste walking bomb like i think i mentioned earlier for example, like you know a huge mob is coming up, you don't want to like waste your walking bomb on two guys. This is where Winter's Grasp comes into play cuz you instead of using walking bomb, you Winter's Grasp them and then you can fade cloak them right after and that works almost just as well as opposed to just wasting your walking bomb. So it's up for the next fight. So with all four of these abilities, you can see how they start to come together and just synergize so well. So to kind of recap and talk about how all this, all this finally comes together, I'd like to finish out with what this build is basically for. It's for people who want to play aggressive who want to always feel like they can do something because you have such short cooldowns you're never going to be left auto attacking so this isn't really a build for people who like to like sit in the back lines and safety 
you're going to want to be like up there in the front lines doing work and this is a very high risk high reward way to play but once you nail how to do it and I think I've gotten to that point is like I said earlier you have to know like when to play aggressive like when to kind of like back up and, and sit back a little bit but once you learn that and how to use all your abilities together and when to save walking bomb for certain situations how to cast it when to use fade cloak to start a detonation like once you learn how all that comes together you're gonna have a lot of fun playing this way and for anyone on the fence you know just try it out you got nothing to lose and I think once you learn how to play play like this you're gonna have a lot more fun and I think that pretty much wraps everything up but anyways guys I really hope you enjoyed this guide um, I've never really done like a guide this way like I only started my channel a month ago so any um, any suggestions or constructive criticism <laughs> would be appreciated but wow this turned out really long <laughs> I think I'm sitting at like 25 minutes around there um, I gotta end this soon <laughs> but yeah uh, thanks for watching and I actually write all this down, so in case you don't want to watch the whole thing, um, I'll put like the uh, the full like written guide in the description. But yeah, <laughs> I think that sums up everything. So I'll see you guys later. I'll leave this last part up to the end. You can watch me uh, die multiple times. <laughs>